Greetings, Erdlings, Wisdom Keepers, Wisdom Seekers. Welcome back to Wisdom Drops, your source for daily drops of wisdom and savvy cat astrology. My name is Tanya, and today we are discussing the Taurus full moon for you, Earth signs. If you are a Taurus, a Virgo, or a Capricorn ascendant, sun, or moon, then this video is for none other than you. By the end of it, Earth sign, you're going to have a total overview of what you can expect in the coming month throughout the course of the energy that is playing out. So um, we're going to get into these juicy details here starting now. And also a big juicy detail is if you're looking to learn how to be the person talking about this stuff in this capacity, I have an astrology school that is starting. So you can register for that by scheduling a call with me down below in the description box. And uh, then we'll have a little interface discussion via the Zoom. And if all things go, um, you know, swimmingly, it seems like a good fit, then we'll get you enrolled. It starts at the very beginning of June. It goes for six months. That's 26 weeks live every single Sunday super fun. Uh, we keep it in a relatively intimate class. There's a lot of live interaction and it's just like all wrapped up in this like beautiful, fun experience. That's not a boring lecture. It's like so much more. It's just everything you could ever want in an astrology program. More details for that down below. And we're starting right around the corner. Spaces are filling up. So if you're meant to be there, get in today, schedule the call. Awesome. So Taurus uh, people, this is your forecast. You're the star because this new moon on May 11th of 2021 is happening in your sign. And this signifies a new opportunity for everything to do with yourself and how you interface with the world, Taurus. So you're a sign that is fixed earth. You are the fixed earth sign. You are all about value. You are all about possession. You are all about money and you are all about stability. So everything related to you, everything related to earth and fixed stable energy of what we what we need to remain earthly connected, you know, the earthly pleasures, food, you know what I'm saying, shelter. These are very Taurian concepts. All of that is going through a 2.0. Everything related to that in you, Taurus, is now 2.0. It says, you know what? Actually, you thought it was this. Now it's that. You thought it was one way. Now it's another. Everything related to that, Taurus, nothing is off, you know, the table. Because Uranus, it will touch what it chooses to touch. And the first house of Taurus for you is all about self. And so it's really about whatever's going on with your body, whatever's going on with your life, with your interface with the world, Taurus. Expect the unexpected. I think it's going to be relatively auspicious. It could be a great time for you to make some financial moves, Taurus, with this Venus Mercury conjunct the North Node in your second house. You might feel you have a plan of action that's very intuitively guided and very brainy and informed. And it's just related to your values and what you value and your self-value, your self-worth, second house, Taurus, all of this is going to be building up over the next month to bring you an awareness and a new beginning, not just an awareness, but an action. I'm seeing this as a very action-oriented chart that brings you um, things. And it's from a it's like a 50 50 like you put in the effort but 50 percent of this is just destined you know what i mean it's like you have to put in something um but you're going to get out of it a lot of really auspicious results so exciting stuff taurus enjoy that and before you leave hit the like button if this video brought you value because it helps more people get the information and it's a cool way to say thank you to me for giving you all this energy um, for nothing in exchange. It's just a good way to elevate our platform and our community. And if you're new here, you can subscribe because we do put out a video every single day of the week. Awesome. Moving on to Virgo. We're going to cruise on over to you, Virgo, and see what's going on with you for this May 11th, 2021 new moon in the sign of Taurus. 
So Virgo, if this is you, this new moon is happening in your ninth house. How spectacular. The ninth house of Taurus, you know, this is a happy house for you, Virgo. Um, ninth house has to do with joy and it has to do with our faith and our spirit. So I feel like a lot of Virgo people out there, you might have been feeling really diminished lately, really sad, really like, oh my God, because you had Saturn in the sixth house, which is not easy um to deal with for the last year and so you might have felt like a lot of raining on your parade you know uh, especially even related to your belief systems because saturn has been squaring your ninth house uranus but the new beginning here is in that same ninth house the new beginning here is going to help you start over in a lot of ways with your belief systems how you're seeing the world how you're making sense of groups outside of yourself and the world outside of you and look virgo this has auspicious likelihood here and i see a lot of you um, coming into some career moves if you're a virgo who's been going through some life shifts and say in the last year or so you've been laid off or you change your job you're gonna have a really beautiful change you're gonna have a really beautiful um new beginning here in this realization of what is this longer career thing what is this larger legacy thing? What are you really here to do, Virgo, in the long haul? This is where you're going to get answers on that definitively. This is where it's going to be like a no nonsense. You cannot make this up. You cannot misinterpret. This is what's changing with your legacy. And it's going to be poetically revealed to you. Why do I say that, Virgo? Because your ruling planet Mercury is here, of course. And so is Venus with it the planet of beauty for crying out loud, the planet of beauty and the planet of communication together with the north node, could you get any more poetically destined in your 10th house of legacy? Virgo, it's all coming together. Keep the faith, ninth house. It's all about your energy this month. Keep your faith, Virgo. Keep your spirit tuned in, tapped in, turned on. And I think you're going to expect a lot of, you should expect, and you, you could see a lot of really positive results, especially related to any um, long-term habit that you've been diligently working on a little bit every day over time, a little bit consistently, that sort of thing is going to surprisingly, Uranus, it could surprisingly come back to benefit you at this time. So Virgo, hit that like button as a way of saying thank you for me giving you this delicious nugget of vibe report. And um, you can join Astrology School, Virgo, if you're looking to learn this stuff for yourself once and for all. It starts in less than a month. Click the link in the description box down below, baby, to get yourself enrolled today. All right, we are moving right along to Capricorn. Capricorn people. All right, Capricorn, you are going to have this new moon in your fifth house. So the fifth house is all about your childlike energy, your ability, Capricorn, to create your playfulness, your romantic expression, your uh, pleasure and frivolity, your maybe even speculation or like um, gambling or having like fun and just really going flirty and crazy and whatever. Like that is all the fifth house Capricorn. So this new beginning could catch you out of nowhere. You might get an opportunity to go joyriding out of nowhere and just do something that's silly like that. That and just be kind of like um, not responsible with resources for a while to have that little woo like you know you went in the convertible and did something goofy and crazy and unleashed and nuts that's not like a bad thing to do if you're feeling that, that that's like what needs to happen just be aware if you're going 100 miles an hour you might get pulled over because Saturn is square and Uranus still in an ongoing square but you know what if it's worth it it's worth it Capricorn who am I to tell you what to do with your life but with that said, I do think that the fifth house new moon is calling you to create from a place of fun, to enjoy yourself, to be artistic and expressive, and don't be afraid to be the star in the context of knowing how to manage resources in a creative way on the total converse of this kind of like spring break attitude that I just illustrated. It could also be, look, I am the conservation 
um, expert. I know how to conserve resources in a creative context. Fifth house, Taurus, you understand? And Uranus might be like, wait, I know how to bring advanced knowledge and advanced skill and awaken the kind of creative thought process to the idea of creative process. And this is going to bring us a big, new, bold idea. This could lead to new work environments, sixth house, Mercury, Venus, conjunct the North Node for you, uh, Capricorn. And, you know, it could lead to new engagements and relationships with Mars currently in the seventh house, new business partnerships that you feel a deep affinity with, um, et cetera, et cetera. I think this is an auspicious new moon because it's in your fifth house. It's all about your creative ability. That's really what it boils down to, Cap. It's about your creative ability. And if you got kids, Capricorn, something is bumping off with the kids. Something's going on with the kids, their lives. They're creating something new, big surprises and windfalls could find them at this time with all that Uranus energy. You got Jupiter in your second house about to transition to your third house at the time of this lunation. So that tells me in the course of the next month, in the course of the next two weeks, Jupiter is changing under the auspicion of this new moon in the fifth house. And that's really going to translate into these new beginnings coming forward into your business. If you got business like that, Capricorn, because third house in ancient astrology is the house business. Let's not forget. Also, it could be leaving you some gifts in that financial reward of the Saturn in Jupiter that's been in that second house. Now, Jupiter is going to come back, okay, Capricorn, after a few months, okay, of staying in Pisces. It's only a prequel of coming attractions, but it's going to bring you some awareness. It, whenever it goes over the second, third house cusp, it's always going to give you like a little awareness, a little gift, a little extra something, something to think about, to mull over, to experience, okay? Especially with Saturn there, um, I could see this being very much so a preview of what is to come further down the road. Okay, Capricorn? Okay. Make sure you hit that like button because gratitude is the attitude, baby, for all this free wisdom I be dropping on you. Capricorn, if you want to get serious and learn astrology for yourself, look no further than the description box down below. Schedule your call today to get yourself enrolled in Wisdom Drops Astrology School. We start in less than a month, baby. Be there or be square. I'm excited to help you navigate the stars. Thank you so much, everybody who subscribes, likes, comments, and otherwise supports this channel. And with that said, through next time, until next time, may the stars be with you. Peace.